This morning we're down here at Goolwa Beach and we're about to meet Derek and Steve who are going to show us how to get cockles or cootie and then we're going to come and eat in the Cootie Shack restaurant. Finally got together. <laughs> I know. How are you going? I'm excited. All right, so where are you? Should we just drive on the beach? Yeah, we're just here. So yeah, follow us. We'll get down on the beach. And... Is it need to let our tyres down? Or... Nah, no, no, no. That's pretty probably... solid. Yeah. Okay, right. good-o. Yeah, yeah, it's good. <laughs> so we've met Derek and Steve, and now we're going to go on the beach. We're lucky to have Derek Walker feature in this video. Derek is a Nurunjeri elder and a key member of Kuriko, a wholly Nurunjeri owned fishing company whose crew gathered the cockles down here. Kuriko is now a major shareholder in Gulwa Pipiko who processed the kuri for sale. So in this video we'll explain how to cockle and Derek will also share the cultural importance of cockling to the Nurunjeri people. First time for us on Gulwa Beach in a car. Pretty firm. Yeah, that a little bit soft coming onto the beach, but now it's beautiful. Yeah, look, as far as we're concerned, uh, kuri is not only for kokol um, or pipis. And the reason that we emphasise it, you know, it's a way of getting our, uh, our language, um, our heritage, our cultural uh, understandings out into the broader community. Our mob have been harvesting kuri for millennia. It has been a major protein source to sustain not only for um, generations. Anyone that's come to Gould Beach, they would come and they would harvest cockles. Mm. It's, you have the cockle train down here. The, the whole area is, is aimed at this beach and the natural resource that comes off this beach. Pippi's an, an East Coast name and uh, our biggest market is Sydney Fish Market. Oh, okay. And they yeah. call them pippies? They call them pippies. Oh, spot you always come to or roughly uh, roughly yeah when we're doing stuff on the beach we'll just... all right let's do it all right all right okay steve you're going to show so, me how it's done yep try to awesome <laughs> so i've never cockled before um right. so i'm pretty excited to learn how it's done yeah we're down yeah. here on gulwa beach today so richard peninsula yeah Good spot. We're actually pretty lucky with the weather today. The wind's really not an issue. A little bit of sun. Actually, let me get my thongs off. <laughs> All right, maybe you can um, tell us a bit about the gear, Steve. Well, we've got the cockle rake. This is the commercial ones, custom made. They got certain size mesh, so the undersize will fall through. So the undersize falls through, that's a bonus. Yeah, and then we've got a grader on the back of the ute as well. Oh, okay. And so what size are we allowed to keep? 3.5. 3.5, yeah. all right. And like, how long does it take them to get that big? Uh, it all depends really on how much food they've oh, got okay. in the water or yeah. in the sand. 
Yeah, right. So it varies. Okay. Yeah. All I've right. Seen them, I've seen them grow 10 mil in a, within a month in some spots. Yeah. But yeah, sometimes it takes probably roughly about three years to get to full size. Three years. So what sort of thing would I use? Um, obviously, I wouldn't have a beautiful commercial bit of gear like this. What would I use coming down here? Um, you can buy them from any real fishing outlet. They're a bit different. They don't have the actual mesh like we have, but oh, okay. you just hand measure them. Yeah. But yeah, All right. pretty good. Awesome. So this is what the, uh, the professionals use. And Steve's a professional <laughs> cockler. So let's see how it's done. All right. The sand's really hard, isn't it? Yeah. Along this side of the beach it is. Yeah. We commercially we fish on the other side of the mouth. On the south the southern side of the mouth. So. Is it softer there? Yeah. Right. It's yeah, because totally this different. is very hard. And like you'd never think there's anything under this sand. Nah. Woohoo! It's a bit cold. Alright, what are you doing now? Put your feet on the ground and turn them when the water goes out. When the water goes yeah. out, you turn them. And what are you feeling for the cockles? For the cockles. All right. Nothing in it. When you're walking out, after a while, you get to feel that the sand changes when there's something in it. Okay. What size the crab, Steve? Oh yeah. <laughs> there it is, as well. <laughs> all right. Well, I can't feel anything at all. No. Not feeling it. Not yet. Okay. So we just, just keep, going, keep going, out going out until we can feel it. Yep. All right. I can feel anything. Right there. Right about there, eh? You reckon you can feel something? Can you feel the sand change yet? It goes like a slimy type of feeling. Ah, uh, let me try again. I can't feel anything yet. Yeah. So does it loosen them? Yep. And then they go into the net. Oh! <laughs> Check it out! There's one. And there's all heap of underside ones there too. Oh yeah. Look at that. All right. So you okay. just loosen them, they rush out with the water, with the water into and the then rate. they go into there. Okay. Yep. Or you can normally feel them and pick them up. They're all shells. You wait for the water and then you start wiggling. Yep. And you use the water just to wash the sand away pretty well. Okay. Feel them yet? Yeah, I can feel something under my toe yet. Yeah. And so you just like really loosen them up. Yep. And then as the water, as the water recedes, recedes, it pushes it them into the. Okay. It sucks them out pretty well. Woohoo! It's a bit cold. <laughs> yeah. This is a warm day. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely feel the cockles under my toes now, now that I know what I'm doing. Now that I know what to feel for. <laughs> Look at him go! Woohoo! There we go. Two more. How's that? Nice one. So, do you reckon that one's that keeper? That one's size. Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. So... There's one there. Okay. One under my toe. Yeah, I can feel them too. So, you can just like pick, pick them up them with up. your hands if you don't want to do the like the whole shuffle thing, but I mean, I can feel them. Oh, I'm just gonna get right at the bottom. Ah! 
<laughs> There's a lot of shells though. Yeah. Heaps of little ones. Yeah. You try that? Yeah. So what you do? Just stand there, dig your toes in, yep. and flick. And it washes the and sand. And flick. Yep. And where do I put this? Straight in front of you. Like that? Yep. <clears throat> There's a lot of waves coming, Steve. <laughs> ah! All right, should I be doing it now? Yeah, when oh. the water washes out. Oh, hang on a minute, when it comes back out. Yeah. As the water washes out, <laughs> put the rake down. It's, it's still coming in. Yep. really feel any. Keep a little one. Woo! This is... <laughs> this is harder than it looks. Look out. Look out. <laughs> Woo! Woo! <laughs> Some days we get it that rough that the waves are coming in over our heads. I think uh, I might have added a couple. <laughs> we're going to do it a little bit more. Just so it's tricky getting the bag in the right spot, I find. How did you say that? Naran... Naranjali. Naranjali. My wife's a linguist. She, she, she teaches Naranjali. So, um, yeah. Naranjali. Naranjali. It's a bit of a... It's a bit of a... Naranjali. It's a bit of a role of it. Yeah, yeah it's it is. the role. What is it? Naranjali. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. So what area does Naranjali cover? So Naranjali country goes from Cape Jervis to Maipalonga and down to Cape Jaffa and is heading towards the southeast. Now, I have had consent determination oh, yeah. um, back in 2017, which is not, not that long ago, uh, down on the uh, on the riverbank at Murray Bridge. Um, the federal court, um, you know, acknowledged that Nalanjali um, country is is where it is, uh, and that we have had a continuing connection to that particular country from time immemorial. Because of that consent determination, um, there was some. Um, I guess enterprise bargaining if you like uh, with the state government they handed some land back they gave us some money um, and uh, and most importantly there was an acknowledgement that uh, our country including this bit of country um, is, is traditionally the um, sits with Nalanjali. Let's go lay them out on the beach. Yep. Well, this is a nice amount from probably for you quite a short amount of time. Yeah. I actually found that I wasn't really able to get many out of the sand. But I guess, you know, we need to practice. Yeah. <laughs> You've probably been doing it. it You've been doing it for a while. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this looks good. Big they are, Mark. So I'm trying to dig in. Oh yeah. Oh. Oh no, the water's coming. No. Look, will they all go back in? I'll try. That's all right. Oh, this one. Look. Oh look at this one trying to go. Oh look, they're trying to dig back in. 
Okay, good. Oh, they're all trying to dig in. We better put them back away. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, was funny. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just can't believe how quickly they were digging themselves back in the sand. They were disappearing. <laughs> <laughs> That's tricky. Look how easily you do that. Oh, wow. That's really difficult. <laughs> That's very, I can see how effective that is. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And that's how Steve manages to get like that many with just a little bit of shuffling because he's loosened up so many and they whoosh into the bag with the receding water. Fantastic. roughly <laughs> on the mark it's crazy because crazy but that's true yeah that's four centimeters mine yeah if you go in between there oh no it's three and nearly four in between there is pretty well dead on the side how do i keep them alive and healthy for when i want to use them as bait salt water submerge them area. yeah keep keep them cool yeah so i might just go pop some water in the bucket then That's a good size. So that's great. That makes it so much easier. Yeah. Nice. So we've got 510 in the bucket. We've got 510 in there. We're allowed 600 because 300 each. So I can only put another 90 in, so I've got to count them. So I read somewhere that you can only have 1,200 per car. So if you've got five people, it's not 300 each. It's kind of like a boat limit. I think so, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. Kuriko isn't just about a commercial opportunity, it's, a, it's about a cultural opportunity, it's about uh, people understanding who we are and the fact that this is, you know, our traditional country and our mob have been here for a long, long time. And so the fact that we come back into this industry after a, a, a well, not really a break, because our mob were always harvesting kuri, would go down and get a feed, uh, those sorts of things, but from a commercial perspective, um, it really lines up for us um, and I remember my mother-in-law telling me that they would, the whole of the community down at Raupen would, would go down on um, horse and cart and any way they could to get down to the Kurong, go across the other side and go and harvest kuri. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a, a cultural activity for us forever um, and there's a kuri song, there's a traditional kuri song that our mob sung during um, initiation ceremonies for young men um, and so it's an indicator of the longevity of our involvement with Kuri 
and the very fact that we're in an industry that we can commercialise and provide an opportunity for employment, because that's, that's a big deal. Uh, getting our guys on the beach employed is really important for us. That's fantastic, Derek. For me, seeing the sign pointing to the Quitty Shack is just gold. In 2016, we bought it 1% of the industry, and in 2018, we bought a company called Quitty Co. And we've been able to buy about 20% of the industry. And as part of that relationship with Gore Pippi Co., we were able to support the development of Quitty Shack. So the Quitty Shack is a business that runs in its own, in its own right, but it's a cellar door for our Quitty that our young fellas harvest. So I'm here with Brendan and Vanessa, the owners of the Quitty Shack. We have just had the most amazing meal here. We had the Feed Me menu. These are your own selections. Absolutely. Yeah, their own selections for today, but it was spectacular. Tell me, you guys, how long have you been managing and owning this fantastic establishment? Well, we've been here for four years in December. So, four yeah, years. birthday coming up next month. Have you noticed like a big difference in trade over that time, or is it? been a weird time to do business in the restaurant yeah. industry. Um, yeah, we started out really strong, then obviously everyone yeah. took a bit of a hit. Um, but no, tourism in South Australia is the best it's ever been at the moment. It's Especially absolutely, regional. Yeah. We're lucky. Yeah. It's back. Very it's lucky back. in it's back. the beach here. So. so we've literally just been cockling on the beach and really keen to see what they taste like and come in and try some of the signature dishes. They tasted amazing. Just tell us about those couple of dishes that you served us with the pippies today. Yeah, so the pippies with chili jam and lemongrass, yeah. native greens. Yep, obviously purged by the Gore Pippi Co. Yeah. And yeah, served up fresh with some bread to mop up the sauce. That was it had a real bite to it. There was yeah. a beautiful creamy sauce as well. What dish was that? So our malawe with tom yum and pippies. Um, so local malawe caught right out here, and then we do it with the Gore Kuti and the tom yum. Mm. Yum. That was the first time I've ever had Mulloway as well. So we thoroughly enjoyed those dishes. So do you get a lot of tourists in? Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah. Definitely a lot in the last year. Yeah. The first couple of years was a bit quiet with COVID, but yeah, they're definitely back, so. Mm. Yep. And I would have thought there'd be a local contingent as well, and people that just want to always come down here and enjoy the incredible view and the food. Kuddy Shack, we obviously proudly serve great South Australian seafood. Um, we do have the more formal restaurant, but then we've also got outside, come straight off the beach, sandy feet, no dress code, um, to just have a bowl of pippies and a bit more casual, maybe a beer. So now you know how to get your cootie or cockles. It's a bit of a trick to it with the shuffle, but hey, a bit of practice and you'll be able to do it. This is Fishing Sister saying goodbye. <laughs>